In this video, you will learn about some common habits to avoid if you would like to sound like a leader and if you would like to sound confident instead of insecure. And maybe you need to break some of these habits that could be holding you back in your professional life or your personal life. You will learn some phrases that will automatically make you sound more confident, more professional, and more certain about what you're saying. This is such an important skill to master if you would like to be a leader in the future, or if you're currently in a leadership role at work, or if you simply wish to be a good communicator. These tips will make a big difference. You will listen to my conversation with the communication expert, Dr. Alex Lyon. Alex has spent his career training professionals in the corporate world how to communicate more effectively. Alex is also a college professor and author. He also has a very popular YouTube channel that specializes in communication for professionals. The name of his channel is Communication Coach Alex Lyon. Make sure you check it out. Alex will give you a lot of phrases to use. He covers some of these topics pretty quickly and he gives you lots of information in this video. So make sure that you watch until the end. We will practice these phrases together. I will give you a chance to repeat after me so that you can speak in the confident style that Alex was talking about. Let's listen to my conversation with Alex. Hi, Alex. It's great to talk to you again and to have you back on my channel. So happy to be here, Lisa. Thanks for having me. You and I made a video a few years ago, and it's still the most popular video on my channel. It's got over 11 million views. Yes, yeah, incredible. It's my most popular video too, so I'm really thrilled to be coming back on your channel and doing this again with you. In this video, we will give tips about speaking like a leader. Why should we learn to speak like leaders? Well, leaders by definition have more influence. And so if we can learn to speak like a leader, even if we're not in an official leadership position yet, we can have more impact and make more contributions to the people around us. Okay, let's get started with the tips. This advice is on what not to do if you wish to speak like a leader. And I'll start with the first tip and then Alex will share his advice. And the first tip is don't over apologize. I didn't say don't ever apologize. I said don't over apologize. Don't do it too often. How often do you apologize? How many times a day do you say sorry at work? And what kinds of things do you apologize for? Apologizing too often may be a habit that you need to break. If English is not your native language, it's really important for you to keep in mind that there could be cultural differences regarding politeness and apologizing between your culture and the American culture. In some cultures, apologizing is a way to avoid disagreements. And a big priority is placed on keeping the peace rather than disagreeing and giving your honest opinion. And so to keep things calm, people may offer an apology even when they've done nothing wrong. How is over apologizing seen in the American culture? If you apologize excessively for minor issues and small mistakes, you may appear less confident and your coworkers may doubt your ability to do your job. And if you have a job where you need to lead people, they may question your ability to lead them. You may come across as insecure, weak, or indecisive. Remember, I'm not saying that you should never apologize. I'm recommending that you save your apologies for when they're actually needed. Apologize when it's necessary to apologize. Do you have this habit? Do you often find yourself saying, so sorry, I need to ask you something? Or, sorry, what are your thoughts on this? And non-native speakers sometimes apologize for their English. Oh, I'm sorry, my English isn't so good. Even when their English is good. Here are my tips, and then Alex will give you some of his. To break this habit, try this. Next time you're at work, count how many times you said sorry, or I'm sorry, or I apologize for. And try to notice if you're apologizing more often than your coworkers and practice only apologizing when you actually did something wrong. Alex, do you have any comments or tips on this one? 
Yes, I agree that you should save your apologies for times you've actually done something wrong. And instead of, I'm sorry for minor issues, find better ways to handle those moments. You may want to express your thanks and appreciation instead of saying you're sorry. For example, you could say, thank you for pointing that out. I'll address it. You could say, I appreciate your feedback and I'll make those adjustments. Instead of sorry to disagree, say, thank you for hearing me out. Instead of sorry, you had to do that extra work, say, thank you for putting in the extra effort. As you can see, you can often substitute a similar thought by starting with thank you instead of I'm sorry. You can also ask a straightforward question or make a statement instead of apologizing. Instead of sorry to bother you, say, do you have a minute to talk? Instead of sorry to interrupt, say, I'd like to jump in here for a moment. Those are excellent tips. And let's go on to tip number two. Don't minimize your accomplishments. If you're good at something, if you have very good skills, don't deny that. Work on becoming comfortable talking about your achievements. Now, I'm not saying that you should be arrogant or boastful, but when someone compliments you, don't disagree with them. Say thank you instead. Again, try to be aware of the cultural differences about humility and about talking about your success and your skills. In some cultures, particularly those cultures that emphasize humility and group harmony, self-promotion can be viewed as arrogant. People from these cultures may feel uncomfortable when they're asked to discuss their accomplishments, even on job interviews. In contrast, Americans are often encouraged to talk about their accomplishments, their skills, and their contributions to the company or the projects that they're working on. So don't downplay your accomplishments. People will not know how good you are if you're not comfortable talking about it. I suggest that you try to get used to talking about your successes. And you can do it in a way that doesn't sound arrogant. Remember, leaders know their value. Leaders are confident. Don't speak about yourself in negative ways. Don't diminish who you are or what you have achieved and what you can offer to the company. Humility at work will generally not benefit you. Assertiveness is good, but arrogance is bad. And there's a difference between the two. Alex, what are your tips on this topic? Well, at the root of this is a difference in mindset. In my experience, people who really do come across as bragging or arrogant sometimes have an insecure mindset. And that can come across as off-putting, as you mentioned. Instead, express yourself from a mindset of gratefulness. When we're grateful inside, we tend to express ourselves more effectively on the outside. In terms of how you actually deliver a message, say it in a matter-of-fact way and then move on. In contrast, when you talk about your accomplishments, don't pause, look around the room, and wait for people to <laughs> applaud or say, wow, great work, Alex. One assertive approach that pulls these tips together is to talk about your accomplishments in terms of the beneficial outcomes you've created for a client, the team, or the company. For example, you could say, Last year, my team was able to help 20 clients exceed their revenue goals. Or, we were grateful to play a central role in helping the company grow to over 500 employees. Or, our team managed to cut customer complaints and refunds for the company by 50%. Even though you're using words like team and our, it will be obvious to anybody listening that you've played a central role in those accomplishments. And by focusing on your gratefulness, and the benefits that you've created for others, people will see that you have Fantastic. the right attitude. Wonderful, thank you for that. And the next tip is eliminate uncertainty in your speech. Eliminate uncertainty when you're giving your opinions. When you say something, you should avoid words that make you sound unsure of what you're talking about. Leaders come across as if they're confident about what they're talking about. How can we do that, Alex? Well, leaders must strike a difficult balance. They have to stay open-minded about the opinions of other people. At the same time, they must be as clear as crystal when they express their own point of view. Uncertainty, Lisa, is not a good leadership trait. No. That means you should use clear, definitive language when you can. So here are some uncertain statements I've heard people use in business. 
and I'll suggest some more effective and leader-like ways to express yourself. Instead of replying, I'm not sure, say, I haven't come across that yet. Instead of using phrases like, I think or I feel, which sounds soft, use stronger predictive language like, I predict, I anticipate, or I envision. This communicates to others that you have already thought about the answer and you see the future clearly. Now, of course, I'd like to give a qualification about this advice. In many cases, the answers are not clear. I'm not suggesting you should speak with complete confidence when there's a situation that truly is a riddle with no clear solution. But when you can speak with confidence, do it clearly and concisely. And here's why. In business, uncertainty is the main ongoing problem leaders face. Some researchers say that dealing with unpredictability is the central ongoing daily activity of leaders. And that light, you personally don't want to introduce unnecessary uncertainty into conversation. So let's look at a few more illustrations. Instead of I think or I believe, say based on the data, it appears that. Or from my analysis, it's clear that. And then fill in the rest of the thought. Instead of I'm not certain if, say I need to verify whether, or say, first, let me confirm before I make a recommendation. And instead of the classic, I don't know, you can say, I don't have that information right now, or I'm not currently in a position to answer that. Instead of, I'll try, say, I'll make it happen. Or say, I'll do my best to ensure it's completed. Or say, we'll do everything in our power to deliver it to the client on time. Now, there's a related issue around the topic of uncertainty. Some speakers unintentionally increase the amount of doubt by what they say. And you've probably heard this. And the tip is, don't create doubt with unnecessary questions at the end of your talking turn. In other words, don't ask questions merely out of habit. But if you do ask a question, ask it in a way that adds clarity rather than uncertainty. So instead of, does that make sense? or do you know what I mean, or simply know what I mean? Ask some version of questions like these. Do you have any questions? Or what are your thoughts? And here's what that would sound like in a complete talking term. First, we'll have to hear back from the client about what they're looking for, and then we can revise our proposal accordingly. Do you have any thoughts on that? Or, in my experience, our CEO Jack gets most excited about proposals that will build something new rather than proposals that just update existing projects. Does that raise any questions for you? When we ask deliberate questions like these, the conversation becomes more focused instead of more ambiguous. Wow, that's such good information. There's a lot of information there. Thank you so much for coming on my channel, Alex. It's always great to have you. You offer such wonderful advice. Well, thank you, Lisa, for having me back on. I love collaborating with you, and I love speaking to your subscribers. And now, let's practice some of these powerful and effective phrases that Alex told you to use. You will see them written on the screen. I will pause to give you a chance to repeat. Instead of saying, I'm sorry, Alex suggested that you use this phrase. Repeat after me. Thank you for pointing that out. I'll address it. You say it. Let's say that one more time. Thank you for pointing that out. I'll address it. Or another one. Thank you for your feedback. I'll make those adjustments. Let's say that again. Thank you for your feedback. I'll make those adjustments. Instead of saying, sorry to disagree, you can say this instead. Repeat after me. Thank you for hearing me out. To hear someone out is a phrasal verb, and that means to listen to someone, to listen to their point of view. As you know, phrasal verbs are so common in spoken English. They're used all the time, both in professional situations and in more casual situations. If you have not yet purchased my course, Phrasal Verbs for Fluent English, make sure that you get it. It will teach you the most important phrasal verbs that you need to know so that you can feel more confident about your English and sound more fluent. The link is in the description below. Make sure you get the course, Phrasal Verbs for Fluent English. 
Here is another way that we can avoid saying sorry at the workplace. Instead of saying, sorry, you had to do that extra work, we can say this phrase. Repeat after me. Thank you for putting in that extra effort. To put in is another phrasal verb. And this phrasal verb is included in my course, Phrasal Verbs for Fluent English. Let's listen to the way Drake and I explain it in the course. Let's listen to Drake explain the second meaning of to put in. To put in effort is to apply a lot of effort. Uh, to put in a lot of hours is to spend a lot of hours. You know, you can say that you put in a lot of hours painting this giant painting and that means that you spent a lot of time, a lot of hours were put into that painting. Um, I put a lot of time into the boxing gym. How much time do you put in per day or per week? I put in about two hours per day in the boxing gym. Wow. Yeah. Let's learn the next meaning of to put in. Let's listen to Drake. Putting in uh, can also mean that you're going to be calling someone. So you can put in a phone call. I'm going to put in a call. Here is another way to avoid saying sorry all the time. Instead of saying sorry to bother you, you can say this. Repeat after me. Do you have a minute to talk? Do you have a minute to talk? And if you are at a meeting and you want to avoid saying sorry, instead of saying sorry to interrupt, you can say this instead. Repeat after me. I'd like to jump in here for a moment. I'd like to jump in here for a moment. That sounds confident. It sounds like you believe that you have something of value to contribute. Alex talked about using clear, definitive language. Instead of saying, I'm not sure, we can say this. Repeat after me. I haven't come across that yet. I haven't come across that yet. Instead of I think or I feel, which can sound kind of soft, you can use stronger language, more predictive language, and you can say this. I predict. I anticipate. I envision. Let's practice using some certainty statements so that you can sound confident at the workplace. Instead of saying, I think, or I believe, based on the data, it appears that. Based on the data, it appears that. From my analysis, it's clear that. Let's say that again. Repeat after me. From my analysis, it's clear that. I'm not certain if, you can say this instead. Repeat after me. I need to verify whether, I need to verify whether, or you can say, first, let me confirm before I make a recommendation. Let's say that again. First, let me confirm before I make a recommendation. When you're speaking at work, to sound confident and to sound like a leader, instead of saying, I don't know, you can use these phrases instead. Repeat after me. I don't have that information right now. Or you can say, I'm not currently in a position to answer that. I'm not currently in a position to answer that. Instead of saying, I'll try, you can use these phrases. Repeat after me. I'll do my best to ensure it's completed. Let's say that again. I'll do my best to ensure it's completed. Or you can say, I'll make it happen. Or you can say, we'll do everything in our power to deliver it to the client on time. Alex said, don't create doubt with your questions at the ends of your statements. So instead of saying, does that make sense? Or do you know what I mean? You can say, what are your thoughts? Do you have any questions? I suggest that you play back this video so that you can practice saying these expressions again and then practice using them at the workplace or when you're having conversations with native speakers. Thanks for watching and keep practicing.
This is the perfect time to work on your English fluency and save $200 when you get the super bundle of all three of my courses. The American Accent Course, 400 Advanced Words You Must Know for Fluent English, and Phrasal Verbs for Fluent English. Go to AccurateEnglish.com.